everyone. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome every one of you to the gospel class. I truly believe through the gospel class, you will surely discover the heart of God and also the will of God towards you. Today, I would like to begin by reading Ephesians chapter 2, starting from verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the air, power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. I read up to verse 3. I'll skip and come to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love which, with which he loved us, five, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Skip to verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not the works, lest anyone should boast. In Genesis uh, chapter 3, we can see how Adam and Eve, they were deceived by Satan. In Genesis chapter 2, let's read the scripture, God has forbidden Adam to eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So when we see Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, here Bible says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. So God clearly spoke to Adam that he should not eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat, you will surely die. That was the word of God and that was the heart of God. But not only there was God, but in the Eden Garden, there was also Satan. So Satan came and he started to whisper and he started to speak to Eve. And Bible says, what did Satan whisper or what did Satan speak to Eve? It's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor you shall touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So there were two hearts, and also we can say there were two voices. The heart of God, or in other words, the voice of God says, you shall not eat it. The day you eat, you will surely die. But Satan, in the form of serpent, came and spoke to Eve. If you eat, you will be like God. Your eyes will be open and you will know what is good and what is evil. So now, what did Satan do? Satan, he started to put mistrust in the heart of Eve towards the word of God. Which says, you will surely die. But Satan says, lest you die, your eyes will be open and you will know what is good and what is evil. So ultimately, what Eve chose, Eve chose the voice of Satan, the heart of Satan, and he, she forsook the word of God. In other words, uh, if you see this the glass of water, you can say, this water is the heart of God in the heart of Eve. So there was the heart of God. Also, we can say there was the word of God. But what Satan did, Satan started to put the mistrust in the heart of Eve towards the word of God and the heart of God. So everyone, why God created a heart of human being? 
Bible says God has created us in his own image. Am I right? Yes. So this is not talking about the flesh, but this is talking about the heart and the spirit. So God, he made us with his own image, right? So in this heart, we God has made to contain the word of God and the heart of God. So when can human being truly experience true happiness? When in this heart, we contain the heart of God and the word of God, then human being can experience true joy, happiness, and rest in God. But what Satan did, Satan, he started to put mistrust in the heart of Eve. In other words, here in this cup, you can see uh, this is the heart of Satan. So in this, this Satan, what he did, in the heart of Eve, he put this heart, right? And now we can see if she forsook this heart of God, the word of God, which says we shall surely die. And now if she accepted the voice of Satan and the heart of Satan. Now, in the heart of Eve, after Eve accepted the voice of Satan, who is there? Now we can see that is the heart of Satan, which is contained in the heart of Eve. And this heart of Satan started to lead Eve. Not only Eve, but even Adam was deceived through Eve. And now, outwardly, it seems like it's Adam and Eve, but it is the heart of Satan, which was in the heart of Adam and Eve. And the heart of Satan that you lead both Adam and Eve. When God said to Adam and Eve, where are you? They started to speak something which is very strange in the Bible. Uh, if you see Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. Oh, sorry, I'll read from verse 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So God said to Adam, where are you? So what and how did Adam reply? He said, he said, I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So now Adam is saying, I was afraid, I was naked, so I hid myself. So here Adam is saying the word I, I, I. But actually, this is not Adam. In Adam, there was Satan. So outwardly, it seems like Adam is replying to God as I, but this I is actually Satan. So in the Bible, there is only two spirit, evil spirit and also Holy Spirit. There is two heart, the heart of Satan and also the heart of God. So after Adam and Eve, they forsook the heart of God, they forsook the word of God. Now, who is ruling over their heart? Now, Satan started to lead their heart. Now, Satan started to guide the life. So outwardly, we cannot see who is inside Adam and Eve. But through the Bible, we can discover. So later on, when they started to have conversation, they were able to discover Satan inside their heart. It is Satan who gave me the fruit, and it is I who ate it. I was deceived by Satan. So in this way, Adam and Eve, they were separated from God. In their heart, now what is there? The heart of Satan. So this is called sin. Having different heart from God, having the heart of Satan, in this way we are separated from God. In this way, we lose joy, happiness, and also we lose eternal life, we lose righteousness. From then on, Satan started to lead our heart, Satan started to conquer our heart, and we started, we started to live as a slave of sin. 
So when we see the Bible, let's look at the Bible at John chapter 8. John chapter 8, in verse 44, what does the Bible say? You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resource, for he is a liar and the father of each. So Bible says, you are of your father, devil, right? So who is our father? After we are born in sin through Adam, after we are separated from God in Adam, from God, our father become the devil. So we were born in sin. In other words, we have established Satan as our master. And we did everything according to the leading of Satan. So Bible says, you are of your father devil. Why Bible says in such a way? Because we were born having nothing to do with God. We were not born having the righteousness of God. We were not born having eternal life. We were born as a sinners. We were born having the heart of Satan in us. That's why Romans chapter 5 verse 12 also says how sin came through one man, Adam, and we all became sinners. So for thousands of years, we have lived with the heart of Satan. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, when we read, here we can say, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not potent that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So Bible says, God's hand is not shortened. In other words, God has an almighty hand from any problem, any difficulties, from any situation. He can save us. He can save us also from condemnation, from sin, from judgment. Also, Bible says, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. That means wherever we pray, God is ready to listen to our prayer. But Bible says, even though God wants to help us, even though God wants to hear us, he cannot hear us, neither he can help us. So what's the reason? Is it because God is no strength? God is no power? God's ear is deaf? No. Bible tells exactly in verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your iniquities means your sins have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So having sin in us, having the heart of Satan in us, whatever we do, God doesn't accept. Even Bible says God does not hear the prayer of sinners. Though we pray superficially, though we pray outwardly, in our heart, we have the heart of Satan. We were born with the heart of Satan. So Bible says he does not hear people who have the heart of Satan, who were born in sin. So what separates us from God is the sin, the different heart, which we were born in Adam, that heart which we received in Adam. That's the reason we need to receive the forgiveness of sin. That's the reason we need to be born again from sinner to righteous. We need to receive the forgiveness of sin and we need to be righteous and holy and perfect before God. So when we see the Bible, Bible exactly explains about how we were separated from God in Adam. How we were born having sin in Adam. So when we see Ephesians chapter 2, the word that we read, here it says, verse 1, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. So Bible says we were dead in trespasses and sin. Yes, when did we die? Spiritually, 
we died in Adam. We lost all the righteousness. We lost eternal life. We lost happiness. Also, uh, we lost all the blessings from God, wisdom and power and everything else. From then on, started, Satan started to conquer and lead our heart. So even though we want to live happily, even though we want to be break free from those chains, even though we want to be free from all those deception of Satan, by our power, by our ability, we cannot. So in this way, we were led by Satan for thousands and thousands of years. When we see the book of Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, here Bible says, verse 19, For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Verse 20, now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So since human beings are born with the heart of Satan and sin in them, this sin is making people to commit more sin and also more crime. So Paul says here, what I will to do that I don't do, but what I hate that I practice. So Paul could discover, yes, I have the zeal, I have the determination to do good, but I could see more than doing good, there is the evil which is present in me. This heart of Satan is making people to commit crime, commit sin, the more and more. So Bible says, it is not longer I who does it, it is sin. In John chapter 8, the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, she has the heart to commit adultery. She was dragged by this evil spirit. So in this way, when our heart is connected with Satan, even though we want or we don't want, regardless of our determination, regardless of our effort, we cannot help but to commit sin. Why? Since we are born in domain of sin, we are born under sin. So Bible says there is no one who seeks God. There is no one who understands God. So we were born as the enemy of God. We are born as a sinner who has nothing to with God. In Romans chapter 3, we can find, Bible says, there is no righteous, no, not one. We're all born as a sinner. Also in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we are born having nothing to do with God because of the sin, because we have the heart of Satan. So we human beings, when we stand before God, we are the people who are hopeless, who, can, who can't do anything for ourselves, for our soul, for our sins to be forgiven. That's the reason we need the grace of God. So, when we go back to Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So Bible says, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, right? According to the prince of the power of the air. Who is the prince of the power of the air? He is Satan. We were tossed to and fro. We were led. We were guided. We were deceived by this Satan. So for a long time, we live with the heart of Satan in us. Let's see verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So Bible says, yes, we were such a people who were born without the righteousness of God. We were born having sin in us, having the heart of Satan, having nothing to do with God. But in the heart of God, there was a great love and mercy towards all the human beings. 
When God saw the human being, he felt compassion. He felt pity on us. Why? Because we are the people who were dying because of sin. We were under the domain of Satan. We were ruled and conquered, and we were the slave of Satan. So God, seeing that, he had compassion on us. He felt pity on us. So he has the heart to give us grace. He has to love us. Like the good Samaritan who helped the man, who saved the man who were beaten by the thieves. If there was no good Samaritan, the man who fell among the thieves, he has to die. But this good Samaritan, when he saw, he felt compassion. And then he went to the man who fell among the thieves. He poured oil, wine, he bandaged his wound, and he gave two denarii to the innkeeper and said, please take care of him. In such a way, the good Samaritan saved this man who fell among the thieves. So here, the good Samaritan is Jesus Christ. The man who fell among the thief represents you and me who are dying in sin. Am I right? So Jesus has to save us. Jesus has to pour upon his grace towards us. Jesus needs to have compassion on us. Otherwise, we are the people who can't do anything for our sin. We deserve to die. We deserve to be cursed. We deserve to end our entire life in eternal destruction that is hell. So when God saw us, he felt compassion on us. He had pity on us. Why? Because God created us. God doesn't want us to spend our entire life in the hellfire. He wants to save us. So Bible says, but God who is rich in mercy, right? So God who is rich in mercy because of his great love. So Bible says great love. It's not ordinary love. It's not the humanistic love. There is a great love which he loved us, right? It's not that we love God. God loved us. It's not that we chose God. God chose us, right? That's what these verses meant. Even when we were dead in trespass, it made, alive, made us alive together with Christ. Yes, even though we were dead in sin and trespasses, but God, he made us alive together with Jesus Christ, right? And Bible says, by grace, you have been saved. Yes, even though we were born in sin, we were the enemy of God. We deserve to be judged, condemned, forsaken. But since God has a great love towards us, through Jesus Christ, by killing Jesus Christ on the cross, and by shedding his innocent blood and holy blood, and by paying the wages of sin, God, he saved us. Amen. And this is the good news. This is the gospel. There is nothing that we human beings have done for us to be saved. It is 100% purely through love and through grace and by faith. Amen. Yes, without the grace and love of God, we can't do anything for our salvation. We can't do anything for our sins to be washed and forgiven. So God is demonstrating the love that he had towards a human being through Jesus Christ on the cross. So when we see verse 8, Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. By grace you have been saved, right? So God saved us through Jesus Christ by his grace. Grace means what? We haven't done anything. God he prepared Jesus Christ for us. He loved us. He had compassion for us, right? So that love, he demonstrated through Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, he has done everything for us to be righteous, holy, perfect, for us to enter the holy kingdom of God and for us to attain and achieve the eternal life. So Bible says, by grace, you have been saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin. Saved from judgment, saved from condemnation, saved from hellfire. Amen. So this is 100% purely by grace. And verse 9 says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Not of works. 
right? So we didn't achieve the righteousness. We didn't achieve that eternal life through our works or effort. It's 100% grace of God. Amen. So what God wants to demonstrate, what God wants to tell us, he wants to tell us in this way, through Jesus Christ, your sin has been washed. Though we were the enemy of God, though we deserve to be forsaken judge, but on our behalf, Jesus was forsaken. Jesus was crucified. All our sins that we committed were transferred to Jesus Christ. And he became sinner for us. And paying the wages of sin, he made us righteous. Amen. So when we see the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Bible says while we are still sinners, while we are dying in sin, at that right moment, right situation, at the right circumstances, God saved us through Jesus Christ. Amen. So do we have to do anything for our sins to be washed? No. Everything was perfectly, exactly 2,000 years ago accomplished through Jesus Christ. Amen. God is the one who planned. Jesus Christ is the one who accomplished, who demonstrated. And then Holy Spirit is the one who testifies, which is the word of God. So, once again, if we go back to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, Verse 13, verse 13, Bible says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off. Yes, once we were far off. Because of what? Because of sin. Have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We were brought together through Christ. We were separated because of sin. We were united. We are connected. Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Let's read verse 14. For he himself is our peace. Who has made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of separation. So between God and us. There is a middle wall of separation. What is this separation? What is this wall? This is actually the wall of sin. The wall of separation. Because of this sin, we cannot be united. We cannot be together. The heart of God could not flow in us. We could not be connected. There is no exchange. But now, after Jesus Christ came, he took all away our sin, paying the wages of sin, shedding his precious blood, washing our sins eternally. Now we became one. Now we were united. Now we are connected. Now there can be exchange. Amen. Through whom? Through Jesus Christ. Through the death of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we see to the, the verse. Oh, in the book of Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrew chapter 10. Verse 10. I would like to read. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Bible says by that will, God has made a plan to save us from sins through Jesus Christ. So according to the plan, according to the will of God, through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, he has sanctified us once and for all. Amen. How are we sanctified? How are we justified? How did we become holy and righteous? It's only through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And by shedding his precious blood. So really, the heart which says I'm sinner is the heart of Satan. Yes, God said to Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I was afraid because I was naked. I hid myself. So who is this I? This is Satan. God said, who told you you are naked? I never told you you are naked, right? 
Yes, even though Adam and Eve, they were naked, before they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, because of they had the heart of God and the work of God, God didn't make it as a problem. But after they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they started to think that being naked is the problem. Why? Because of the heart of Satan. So God said, who told you you are naked? I never told you. I never spoke to you that you're naked. That means there is someone who told you you're naked. That is who? That is Satan. So God exactly saw the heart of Satan in the heart of Adam. It is not Adam who replied. Actually, it's Satan. So today God is telling you, who told you you are a sinner? I never told you you are a sinner. You are righteous. You are holy. You are sanctified. You are perfected. You are justified. So why people say they are sinner today? Because there is no word of God in their heart. There is no spirit of God. So Bible testifies our sins have been washed. Our sins have been cleansed. To the many people, they are not listening to the word of God. They are not believing to the word of God. They are believing in their own judgment. They are believing in their own consciousness. They are believing in their own emotions and feelings, looking at themselves. They don't look at the word of God. They don't look at the Bible. They're looking at themselves. They're looking at the flesh and saying, I'm a sinner because I commit sin. But Jesus said, no, I have justified you. I have sanctified you to the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't call yourself as a sinner. Adam, you don't call yourself as a naked. That is the voice of Satan. So we were united through the blood of Jesus Christ. So today, if you hear the word of God, accept this truth inside your heart and confess you are not a sinner. We are righteous and we are holy. We have been perfected. Am I right? So Bible says, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I, but Christ lives in me, right? Now, who is in me? Before in me, there was the heart of Satan, my thoughts, my emotions, my feelings, right? This is the heart of Satan. So we confess we are sinner, we are sinner, right? But now we accepted the word of God, right? Now we have the word of God. Now we have the Holy Spirit after believing in the gospel. So now it is no longer I. Now it is Christ who lives in me, right? Now I am justified. Now I have been sanctified. Now I have the righteousness of God. Am I right? Through faith in Jesus Christ. Now it is no longer I. Now I'm no longer a sinner. I'm righteous, right? So this is before I believed in Jesus Christ. Before I believed in the word of God, I was a sinner. But after believing in the word of Jesus Christ, in the word of God, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a new creation. I'm righteous and holy and perfect. Holy child of God. Amen. So there should be exact distinction before believing and after believing. So before we believed, we are sinners. That's true. Even Bible says. But after we believe, after we accept the word of God inside our heart, we are no more sinners. We, are, we have been made righteous and holy. Amen. So I believe through this gospel class, once again, you could discover the heart of God. And I believe there is true joy and peace when you accept this word. Thank you, everyone, for joining. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.